Alrighty, welcome back. What kind of physics discussion would this be without the talk about energy or work with the inductance? So the statement reads, find the energy stored in a section of length L of a long solenoid, radius R, current I, and N turns per unit length. All right, and we want to do this using four methods. B, where energy is equal to one half Li squared, pretty nice, pretty easy. Or B, where we have the energy is equal to one half times the line integral of A dot I, the current, where A is the vector potential. And then we have uh, the energy is equal to one over two mu naught via the integral of all space and b squared so the uh, b dot b again over all space and then uh, d where we're taking the mixture of b and c together uh, or some kind of mixture and we see here that um, we take as our volume the cylindrical tube from radius a less than r so inside the solenoid and out to B, which is greater than R, so outside the solenoid. All right, that's enough. Now, what we need to know for this is the inductance of a solenoid, which is L equal mu naught N squared pi R squared L, and the vector potential of a solenoid. So you see we have different vector potentials for inside and outside, and if we apply them at S equal R, we get the same thing at the surface, so pretty nice there. All right, let's dive on in. Ooh, excuse me. So the solution says that for A, the energy stored via the inductance, our simplest way to calculate it, well, we just plug in L for uh, the inductance, and we see that we get 1 half mu naught N squared pi R squared L I squared. All right, we're going to be referencing this result all day. Then B, we want the potential at the surface of the solenoid. So A as S equal R. Okay, and we can plug this in for either one of the piecewise definitions and get the same thing, which is mu naught n i r over 2 in the phi hat direction. <sighs> All right, now the energy stored via the potential for nl turns is nl for the total number of turns times the energy per turn is 1 half 0 to 2 pi, because again, we're going through the line integral of one singular turn, which is 2 pi radians. And then I is going in the phi hat direction as well. So you see the dot product works out nice. And you see, lo and behold, we get the same result as we did in A. Now, moving on to C, what we see is the energy stored via the magnetic field is that we have 1 over 2 mu naught. Again, this is all space. So all space means that wherever the field exists within all of space. So from 0 to infinity within three dimensions. Here we know that for a solenoid, the field is confined within the solenoid itself. So 0 to L, 0 to 2 pi, and 0 to R are the integrals that we have to deal with. R dr d theta dz for the cylindrical case. B squared is mu naught ni squared. So we see uh, if we just go ahead and plug everything in and substitute or push out and use Fubini's theorem, we see that in the second line we get a cancellation of mu naught, so that's nice. And then our first integral gives us a factor of L, our second gives us a factor of 2 pi, and then of course we have R squared over 2, so the 2's cancel. And as we have expected by now, we're going to end up with 1 half mu naught N squared pi R squared L I squared. Alright, so we're very consistent. The next method is probably the most gruesome, so we're going to take a little step by step. Here we need to account for the cross product inside and outside the solenoid where the surface is. All right, so outside we see that uh, B is greater than R and A cross B is equal to zero. That's lovely because the field outside is zero. So the vector potential is taking a cross product with the zero component vector and zero, zero, zero. We like that, easy to deal with. Now on the inside, however, we see that our vector potential is uh, at radius A and our solenoid is consistent, so that's quite nice. Again, this is all in the quasi-static approximation. Let's not forget that fact. Um, and then we see that we just get the cross product of phi hat with uh, z hat, which points in s hat. All right, fair enough. And now we can take the, uh, the integrals with that. And as you see, we have two of them. 
we have a uh, spatial integral, which is 0 to L, 0 to 2 pi. And this time, we're only considering from A to the solenoid radius R. Okay, we're not exactly from 0 to R, we're from A to R. All right, that's going to play a difference. Now, on the surface integral, uh, where we have to use the uh, DA that is uh, pointing inward um, from the... Uh, surface since we're inside of it so that we have, that's why we have a negative s hat right there for a differential area and then we just have a because we're evaluating it at the a surface instead of r s and then we have d phi d z again this is a pretty common uh surface integral so after you find the cross product just let the math do what it does and we see here that we simplify the integrals below we get a couple cancellations of twos from the two pi that's wonderful and then you see if we factor out mu naught n squared mu squared mu naught squared n squared i squared l and a pi, we're left with a r squared minus a squared plus a squared. So the a squareds cancel, but also we have a factor of mu canceling in the fraction that we just factored out. And then we see that after algebraically simplifying, we get the same thing we did in a. That is fascinating. But this is also physics, and if we take one thing to derive the other. They all need to be self-consistent, and this is a great check for that.